Game Jolt is a website that allows anyone with even the slightest bit of programming knowledge to expose their gaming creations to the world. While it has some indie gems on there that are worth checking out, it's a site mostly full of meme garbage, shitty horror games made by FNAF fantards, and other such poorly programmed turds. I know this is basically me ripping off Low Tax's gaming garbage series, but as the old saying goes, if you can't beat them, just blatantly rip them off. So let's not waste any time and dive into these abominations of video game programming. First up is Poor Guy. I wonder if this game is going to be a tale about the struggles of inner city poverty. I mean, look at this guy. He's so poor he had to sell both of his arms just to make ends meet. You really have to feel for the guy. And sadly, it's not a tale about inner city poverty. All you do is just electrocute and throw bricks at the poor guy. <laughs> See what I did there? There is literally nothing else to do in this game. Poor guy? More like poor game, am I right? Up next is Zombie Survival. Open world. In progress. Wow, a game about zombies. So original, am I right? Also, this game has cartoon violence, fantasy violence, realistic violence, and realistic bloodshed. Th this game is going to be so fucking violent. It's probably going to get my channel taken down. Oh my god, it, it is going to be so fucking violent, so you might have to look away while I play this game. So we start off in this room that is green for some reason or another. It's never explained why. Then we venture out into an empty world filled with zombies that sound like they are bored out of their minds. <laughs> I can't blame them, this game is boring as fuck. I really don't know where this game takes place. I mean, there's this industrial warehouse that is set next to all these Wild West Indian houses or something. Venturing out into the open shows that we are in fact stranded in what appears to be the middle of Antarctica, and somehow there is vegetation in Antarctica and this thing that is trying so hard to be the Stonehenge. This has to be the most barren, empty game I've ever played. It's obvious that it's nowhere near to being finished. It was probably the result of, at the most, eight hours of production. Up next we have Boy Bob. Boy Bob. Yeah, Super Mario, you are not Boy Bob. And really, what is up with the MS Paint character design? He's wearing what appears to be one of those Asian-type hats. His face is clay-colored, but his arms are completely black. What's that on his shirt? FNAF? Oh, come on. This game was just recently released, and his character is wearing a FNAF shirt. This is a Babby's first game. The levels are more generic than store brand bread, and the graphics were clearly made in MS Paint. Let it be known, Boy Bob is one of the biggest failures in platformer mascot history, along with Awesome Possum and Bubsy. By the way, apparently there's going to be a remake of the OG Bubsy game. That's... pretty cool, I'd say. Here we have another failure of epic proportions called Run Horror. If the intent of this game was to be scary, then the developer failed miserably. They should have just called it Run Horrible, because horrible is exactly what this game is. There is literally nothing to do here. It has to be one of the most empty games I've played off of Game Jolt. There are four buildings, this fire, and nothing else unless you count the uber-realistic mountains that I am trapped in between. Also, the method of exiting out of this game is pretty unconventional. Due to the developer being dropped on his head as a kindergartner, he somehow forgot how to make it to where you exit the game by pressing escape through the menu. Instead, I had to do the old Alt-F4 trick to exit this abomination of a game. After exiting this game, I will proudly never return to it. Next up on the chopping block is Super Crime, a GTA clone, where we play as Tony Hawk, funnily enough. So this is where he's been after the failure that was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. This game has a giant burger with a stick of dynamite in it. Let me repeat that, a giant burger with a stick of dynamite in it. And this giant toilet. D -Wiz Scat would be proud. I really don't see the crime in this game. 
other than the fact that it's a blatant crime against humanity made by someone who is obviously mentally unstable. Why else would there be a giant shitter in this game? Unless D. Wizsked actually happens to be the creator of this wretched pile of nonsense. And finally, we have what I would actually consider a decent game. I introduce to you The Adventures of Pack. We start off in this room with four switches in it. After pulling two of the switches, we are greeted to a lemur with a machine gun. Never thought I'd be saying that, but then again, I never thought I'd have to deal with a giant burger with dynamite in it. This game is actually pretty loud, given that every time we kill an enemy, they let out ear-raping screams that were obviously recorded by the 10-year-old who programmed this game. <laughs> We can also eat the lemurs as if though we're some active member off of e621.net to gain health. This game is also pretty violent, so vorophiles and gorophiles will both be pleased. The difficulty in this game is actually pretty high. You'll have to go through trial and errors in order to truly get good at this game. You'll need to be quite aware of your surroundings if you want to stay alive. This game is almost unfair when it comes to enemy placement. Did I mention that this game has a pedo bear in it? Yeah, if you're gonna resort to using memes that outdated, you might as well just rickroll us at the end of the game. In all honesty, this is actually a decent game jolt game if you ignore the fact that this game will rape your ears. <laughs> this has been my first ever edition of Garbage of Game Jolt. Next time we'll be taking a look at more games from the maker of Supercrime. Let's just pray the rest of his games don't contain giant toilets.